Bill's Club, is that true? How did that happen? You said you weren't going to mention that. Go on, tell me how it happened. Um, I was in a band, no names mentioned. And um, the, the, well, all teetotalers, none of them used to drink. So um, one night I was like, I was dying for a drink. I was getting the DTs and everything, crawling up the wall. So I said, you've got to take me out. You've got to take me out anyway, you know? So they took me to a club called Gossips, which is where I met Spike, and I left them the day after to join them. It was like, ironic, the only day they ever took me out for a drink. Now this band, whose name we're not allowed to mention, I mean, the music was very different. How did you make the swap over to this? I, I was never into them anyway. I was, the choir boys were like, it was the sort of music I, was, I loved anyway. So it was like, like it's fate. I don't believe in fate, but it's, if there's such a thing, then that was it. And you've got a, um, Phil, uh, no, it's Nigel, he's related to Phil Mogg, isn't he? Uh, it's his sister. His sister, his cousin, his uncle, isn't it his uncle? Granddad. Granddad. So do you think that's been a help to the band? I mean, contact and things like that? Initially, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, he did a lot for them before I joined. Um, was the camera? Oh. Um, he did a lot for them before I joined, um, and then when I joined, it was when he was, he was sort of getting withdrawal symptoms from not playing in the band. I mean, we used to rehearse, he used to always be, as soon as Spike went to the toilet or anything, he would be right up there on the microphone and everything. You could tell he wanted to be in the band, he didn't want to be in the position of managing. So um, when I joined the band was roughly when he sort of left. So you enjoyed it so far? I hate it. <laughs> I just can't get in another band. <laughs> You've been trying really hard, let me take yours. No, it takes long. So what are, the pl what are the plans for the band for the next few months? You could well, the that album is like, of paramount importance, so we've got to do that. Uh, we'll, you know, we've got to capitalise on the buzz in America, you know. Because it's like, um, for, for like an, a band with two singles, the, the, the buzz that's going on in America is phenomenal. So we've got to get the band um, to do an album, and then that will hopefully be out in about spring. And then you'll go to the States? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. Were you surprised that Those Should Goes Again didn't actually do better than it did? Because I would have thought it would have gone more into the national charts. I'm not supposed to say it. There was a reason why it didn't, and I don't want to go into it. Why? I can't say it. Okay. Okay. Look, no, it was um, um, it was the fault of a certain record company, not not putting enough backing behind it. Um, they withheld the strike force for a couple of weeks, and um, in that time, all the initial copies were sold out, and the the single got a place in the charts. So in a couple of weeks, that they withheld the strike force, it went down. So um, the so Donald Duck Dub. That's but a real shame. It is a shame, because it's got all the pop stars there. <laughs> Touch wood. Right, well, thanks very much for coming to the studio. Thanks for having me. Keep an eye out for the choir boys. <laughs>